Hey. Yeah. <laughs> this crazy music I think came out in 81 or 82 or something like that. Uh, came from a movie called War Games. You remember that movie? It's an old goodie. Um, and yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun playing around with all these retro terminal streaming. really got me thinking about all the possibilities. And of course, everybody brings all their ideas to the table. And the idea this this time was for... Uh, let me turn this music down. was for um, a terminal in a retro style with uh, the old green screen. So before I show you how to make this, let's just let me show you what you can do with it. It's called Cool Retro Terminal. Uh, a lot of other people have written about it and then YouTubed about it, streamed about it. But I thought it would be a fun way to go. I mean, it's it just a, it's ob the obvious follow-on to the Matrix that we did, uh, and it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. But just let me show you some of the things. So we have we have a, a, a green terminal going on right now, uh, but this can be changed. Uh, you right-click on it. And go to the settings, and you can take change it to amber. Uh, yeah, double click. Yeah, there's the amber one. I played with the amber one for about 20 minutes, and my I gotta tell you, it was really hard on my eyes. In fact, I got the sunglasses out again today because of the lights. Uh, I know I look really retro, but uh, whatever. Um, and so you have the monochrome green, which is the one I was uh, running, and uh, green scan lines, which is slightly different. It's got a little color in it. Um, you have default pixelated, uh, which is kind of flat. You can change all these things. Apple II, this one's crazy. I mean, look at the look at the bevel on this. It's is it a bevel or is it bezel? I think it might be a bezel. And and then you got vintage, which is just completely impossible to watch. You know, it's funny because I do remember working on screens this bad. That's how, but it was always like in the library or something when I was a little kid. And, um, you know, so God, it's come to where it's come today. Uh, IBM DOS, uh, which is sort of a thing. Uh, you'll notice that this, uh, this, there's a little, little gap on the right. That's because every time I change terminals, uh, Tmux tries to uh, make up for the missed space. And I'm, I'm going to show you about that later. I'm actually sharing uh, another terminal, and this is the secret. Uh, it's not going crazy. It's still having a kind of a, a fun uh, streaming version, I guess. Uh, is to have another version of Tmux that's attached. And I'll give you a, a sneak preview of what that looks like. So in another very, you know, I contrast modern terminal. My OBS literally says modern terminal. Uh, I have this nice pretty thing. And so I can read it. And this is, of course, what I've been working on. Uh, for the last two weeks since I started streaming on Twitch. And uh, I switched actually from Solarize to the high contrast and to the 22-point font uh, at the uh, suggestion of some people who were watching it uh, my stream on their phone uh, from the car on their way to work. And so I was like, wow, yeah, we've got we've to be good to these people. So, so yeah, so this is... This is the obviously this is the one that I am almost always going to stream with. These other ones are kind of fun, and when my stream's not really having anything on it, I might switch over to uh, Cool Retro Term. That's the actual official name, and we'll, we'll talk about the creator, um, uh, Felipe. I think that's how you say his name, Felipe. Later, Felipe. Uh, anyway, so a little bit of of um, uh, jump ahead there, but let me show you the other versions. So let's see, go to go to profiles. We've done vintage, we've done IBM DOS, there's IBM 3278, which is really funny. This is this is the terminal I used to have to for the mainframe, I used to have to log into uh, to do anything for job searching within IBM. It was one of their last systems to transfer over. Um, it was yeah, it was this it was this junk up until that point. <laughs> and I mean it was fine, it was a green screen. This is something I, I coded for the whole day on the green screen, and, and I got to tell you, there's something about having a monochrome color that it, it does something different to your focus. I'm not sure what. Uh, I felt like though, it felt like I was slightly better. The amber one gave me a headache, but and I love amber, but 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 so yeah. Anyway, the last profile to check is one called futuristic, which I find interesting because this is 
this futuristic one is is closer than any of the others to the one I just showed you where we actually have an X term and um, it's funny because when you set your preferences uh, for GNOME Terminal uh, one of the options is X term and X term was one of the first ones to do color like really well and so it still remains and and it's funny because when I changed back from Solarize to X term I considered that retro but there's obviously several levels further back we can go for retro. <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do next? Punch cards? I think that's what uh, Raritan was telling me in the chat in the stream. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, let me show you how to set it up. It's it's actually not that hard. It's uh, The trick is really getting it. Um, if you don't know how to install Linux, uh, I'm running on Linux Mint. Uh, it's, run, it's also on um, Arch and on Manjaro, of course. Uh, but I... I'm a, a big Mint fan, uh, mostly because it just works. It's very stable, and I deal with a lot of young people uh, and old people who are trying Linux for the first time, and I hate having to explain why their Linux blew up on them because they clicked on the upgrade button. So for that reason, I recommend the most stable Linux, and currently, in my experience, Linux Mint Cinnamon specifically is the most um stable someday i'll do a whole video about that uh oh here's a question somebody popped on the stream how do you change the modes i can't seem to get mine to change from the default amber uh you actually have to right click zeros if you are in um if you happen to be in the middle um a full screen or something like that the right click might not work for you I noticed when I was full screen a lot of times it would not work it wouldn't it wouldn't pull up so since we are on the war games thing I'll go ahead and put that back on I really I like this little war game so soundtrack. it's I'm sure at this point it's copyright free because it's it's been around for so long um, if you haven't seen war games you really need to uh, I might as well plug them since I'm playing their music uh, it's it's I think it's considered the first hacker movie ever, uh, and we've 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 had fun on the stream with it before. Anyway, so where do I get cool retro term? Um, so cool retro term is from Swordfish90 on GitHub. So the URL is GitHub.com/Swordfish90/cool-retro uh, term, and this is where you go for the source code it's also got some more examples here uh, and I made a mistake uh, when Zero showed this to me the first time I'll give him the uh, copyright well, it's not it's Disney you're absolutely right acerbic you are absolutely right what am I thinking I'm so silly uh, hopefully they will not come after me since I have it so low I'll put it even lower so that I don't get demonetized before I'm even monetized if I ever decide to do that on YouTube. Uh, welcome, by the way. So, here we go. Uh, screenshots. So, there's the screenshots of the things I showed already. There's the green one. That's actually the really messed up one. And, gosh, I mean, these are, like, burn your eyes out. Um, and, so, when I was first installing it, and I'll just mention this for zero sake because we struggled with it because it was late. It's late again, but back then it was really late. And, what I did was I skipped past the section on um, uh, just grabbing the app image uh, and uh, or the snap it was actually in snap now and I looked at the you know they got Yowart and Pac-Man and then they have you know brew even if you're gonna do it on Mac I would look at cathode a lot there's been people review cathode um, and then uh, Ubuntu, they have this thing here where you do all these dependencies and then go ahead and do the install. Um, it's actually much easier to do the snap version. So I will attempt to explain how to do that. Uh, the snap one is tied to, I mean, it depends on whether you like snap. But we actually went straight to the compile and couldn't get QMake on here. We thought we had to. I was just really tired. <laughs> if I hadn't, if I had read any of the stuff above there, I would never have done this. So it actually was like two steps to get it installed once I read it again in the morning, fresh. Uh, so yeah, note to self: don't ever do anything important at night. Um, there's lots of stand up about, you know, night rob versus morning rob. 
Snap is the all-included type of maggot package. Yeah, and it's it's kind of controversial. Some people like it, some people hate it. Uh, I am kind of, you know, apathetic. Uh, my kid calls me. Uh, anyway, so this is probably the easiest. It's to just go get the app image and run it. Uh, but app images are generally put into Snap. Uh, and if you don't have Snap installed, um, they're, they're actually, let me see if I can find the same search that I did. But I searched for, uh, I think this is how I actually found it, is I searched for cool retro uh, term. I'm going to go ahead and cheat and search for Snap at the same time on DuckDuckGo. And there we go, snapcraft.io. This is the one that popped up for me. Uh, and what it, uh, it, I mean, it looked really cool. And I was like, oh, hey, it's here. Filippo, Filippo. Let's click on Filippo. He deserves a lot of credit. This was all created, by the way, in Qt with QML, uh, which I thought was rather interesting. Uh, if you don't know about Qt, some other uh, video, I will talk about it. QT versus GTK versus whatever other, you know, straight SDL, whatever, whatever, whatever other um, graphics widgets library you might like. So here we are on the cool, the the cool retro term. It's funny. I think Snap's kind of picking up steam, no um, pun intended. So you click on install up here, and it gives you the stuff to do to install it. It gives you the sudo command line. Uh, sudo snap install kettle retro term uh, I actually did that and it said I'm sorry you can't do that you need to install snap D so I did the, exactly the same thing I did sudo effect I'll show you what I did so there's no mistaking it um, so from a from a terminal uh, I did this I did sudo First of all, I did the one that they said and it didn't work. Gave me an error, which I can't reproduce now because I'm on a new system. Uh, but if you do, let's see, if you type snap, it said it didn't have snap. And then I, so I did sudo install snap D. Nope, wrong thing. Sorry, missed APT. Are you seeing that or no? Let me see if you're seeing it. Yo, you're, I'm still stuck on the other style let me change the style back to my to my favorite green so you can see it i promise not to punish y'all y'all with uh you know stuff you cannot see until uh i'm just looking at my monitor here to check and make sure yep so i'll i mean we'll use the good stuff later but so sudo apt install step d that was the the prerequisite and then after that i could do this thing that they they listed I could do the this the sudo apt install cool oh no it was sudo snap wait let me do it again ah sudo apt install snap d was the first one it's going to stay it already has it so I'm going to skip this which we'll see come on uh, and then it then after that you do sudo snap install cool retro term and when I did that it went ahead and installed it and all its dependencies which is what was tripping us up when we were trying to compile I'm reading chat here okay so uh, zero says I installed with snap on my Ubuntu and it gave me a warning this app could operate outside the normal sandbox environments of snap thought that was good oh that it warned you interesting I didn't know it did that. <clears throat> um, and I, I have no idea whether this was a risk of being Trojan or anything. I, I think it's got a, a pretty good chance of not being bad. Mostly because there's GitHub and Filippo looks like such a nice guy. I mean, come on. Does he look like he's going to own your system? Probably not. You know, so anyway. Uh, he has a bunch of other really cool things, by the way, since we're on him. Uh, let me show some of the other cool stuff that he's done. Uh, actually, if you just go browse through his um, his fire, his GitHub, uh, and I'll go back there right now. 
if you click on it, he's got some really cool stuff. And he looks like such a nice guy. I want to meet Filippo sometime. Even though he has a, like a 1990s hack, bad hacker movie name. I bet you he pulled Swordfish from... Uh, what was that? Oh, he's Italian. Okay, I don't think I noticed that before. So yeah, you know, kudos to Filippo for putting this thing together. It's been a lot of fun. He actually forked a term widget just to make this thing work. Um, this, uh, where is this one? There's some other, God, what was I looking at of his? Was it Limroid? He has this other thing that he made where Liberito Dream, let me see if I remember what it was. It wasn't retrograde Android. Oh, CRT live coding. This thing has to be tried. So maybe we could get a, get him to show up and come to our our stream to help us set this up, but I'm going to give it a shot, but check this out. This thing, this thing you can code and it will like visualize the music that you've got going on. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. I'm reading the chat. Uh, no, it's just a terminal. Does the CRT actually give you good usability experience? Can it be a setting for work to be done? And that was kind of, the, you know, I blogged a lot about that today. Um, I went back and forth and I forced myself to use the Amber one for like two hours while I was coding some shell code and the Amber one burned my eyes out. I mean, I was like, I had a headache. I don't know if it was because it was coffee, no coffee or something, but I could not do it. I mean, I, it was like, it was like, no, thank God. I really know because as soon as I saw like, you know, like a 4k font, <laughs> I was like, please God, give me back the 4k fonts. And it was so it was just very refreshing. I was very grateful. Um, however, later in the afternoon, I was like messing with the green one. I think Zero said green was more, was cooler or something. So I put, I'm talking about Zero's theory and truly a cervix. There are some regulars on my stream. Uh, great people, by the way. And so Zero was saying, yeah, I do the green one. So I, I did the green one. I'm going to jump back real quick. Um, and... And it, it, it was uh, it was a thing, you know, and I, and I actually, I think the difference is, is that I got really into coding and I was, I was actually pretty successful. Uh, I even wrote um, that I felt for some reason I, I was more focused with just the monochrome. And when I was doing the amber one, the amber one actually let through the colors, right? So you did have color distinctions in the green one. No, <laughs> there's no color. It's just green. You know, you got green and you have your, you know, you have your, your variations on green and you have light green and then dark green and then really, really light green. And, and I just feel like for some reason, possibly, I have no idea why I was just, I was able to focus better. I don't know why it actually has me wondering if colors might, you know, people say they help you focus on the syntax and all that. But, you know, for a long time, like on my website, I don't have any syntax highlighting in any of my um, code fences in markdown i just have black and white because that's what you would see on the whiteboard if i if i were going to do a whiteboard in class or if i was going to print this out i do black and white and and it just really really hyper focuses you on what's there it also forces you to be creative in how you do comments and such so and i got to tell you when i went back to the other terminal and all my comments were red and you know my keywords were white and everything that it kind of i don't know why it just kind of it wasn't the same and I'm not, I don't know if it's worse or if it's better, but I, I'm still trying to put my head around that. In fact, I might force myself to code in a monochrome color for a day on a higher 4K screen just to test it. I don't, it won't be white. Um, I also, I think there's something about the green that, that is, that I don't know what it just, it just was nicer on my eyes or something. The amber, amber, no black and white. No way. I mean, that's just going to burn your eyes out. So anyway, I mean, those are, I really, I really enjoy like deep diving into those kind of questions. But so back to how to install it. Um, you know, you just go get the snappy thing like I showed you. You can rewind the video and watch that. Um, and you just you go there and then, but how do you configure it and run it? Well, when you run it, uh, it's not going to be available as an app. So you're going to have to run it from the command line. And, um, just, but, uh, just to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to jump back to my actual terminal. So here's, here's my actual terminal. And, 
just if you haven't noticed, it's exactly the same thing that is running in the other terminal. And that was a that was a kind of a cool thing I I, I encountered completely by accident. So I um, when you use Tmux, you can attach to the same session. In fact, you can have another person log in as that account, and they can Tmux A and attach, and they can share. You can actually literally sort of pseudo share a uh, keyboard. And so when I came into uh, this other terminal session, which was still open and still on Tmux, uh, I noticed that it was the same thing that was on my retro terminal. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's cool. So um, I, I don't know why I would ever torture people with watching <laughs> You know, I don't I don't know if I would torture them by watching. They get to watch the really horrible, you know, green screen and I get the nice pretty one. Right. But you can do that. Right. So I can I can type whatever over here. I'm going to do that right now. And uh, and it will actually synchronize on the retro terminal because it's using the same Tmux session. All right. So what did I do to configure everything? Uh, all I really did was I installed, let me turn that music to something more fun. Uh, all I did was I installed Tmux, um, I'm not, not Tmux, I installed the cool terminal and then I, I, I put it in my, my settings just like every other thing in OBS and that was enough, to tell you the truth. That was really it. So there's not much more to do that. So it was the Snap thing. Is there anybody on the chat uh, who has questions about who had problems installing it with Snap? Maybe I missed something. But once once I once I found the Snap site, uh, which is in the video, I I had no problem installing. It was really easy. And if I mean if you know Linux, and um, after that it was just a matter of right clicking. Ultimate I Crasher. Run a job to switch themes randomly every two seconds. Well, I tell you what, I of course I had to try T Matrix, right? Uh, which uh, viable another regular was like, you can't mix old school green screens from like eighty one and Matrix. They didn't. They were not in the same time period. And I was like, because I had it. I had that whole filter effect. I have another video on how to do that. Uh, again, thanks to Zeros to helping me get the the um, uh, the Japanese characters, I forget the name of them, they have a special name, to run in the background for the other terminal. Uh, it's just eye-catching fun stuff. I mean, this is nothing serious. And, but yeah, he was he was right. He was like, well, I said, well, you know, they did have green screens. Could, uh, Katakana? Is that what it's called? Katakana? Yeah. And, did I say that right? Kata, kata, katakana. 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 I think I'd know, but... I'd love to learn Japanese one day. Anyway, so uh, there's something to notice though is that uh, this thing does not do well with emojis and things, you know, Unicode. As you can, if you can, if you look really close at this stream that it's doing, it's actually bus pushing over other characters because it doesn't have enough room. So the fades and stuff are kind of messed up, and you can tell because you can see, like the line on the side. Oops, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm showing you the wrong thing here. Let me show you the. Uh, I'm gonna have to redo my keys here so yeah so see you can see over here on the edge it's kind of messing it up because it's 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 got variable variable fit. it actually it actually when you first uh run uh when i first run t matrix t matrix by itself without being in t mux t matrix in t mux uh i it gave me a big old warning uh, the cool retro terminal popped up a warning and said hey you're about to use a non mono space font or something so clearly it doesn't have support for unicode which it shouldn't but whether, you know, the matrix should be used uh, with a green screen, you know, in Bible say, no, 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 because the matrix was on computers that were in the future slash present and when there was a lot of, you know, tech and Neo could never have had run the matrix on his tiny little green screen. He's right. So he likes being right. <laughs> Don't we all? And so I, uh, I removed it. And so we get this, this plain thing. Uh, which is fine. So I, I coded I coded an entire thing. Actually, really proud of it. I, I I finished a big part of my my repo project. It will now infer where you are, um, and to uh, 
if you don't want to have to type in the repo all the way. But that's in another video. If you are serious about learning how to code Shell or use Linux uh, or code Go, so in about two weeks, I'm going to be coding nothing but Go for a long time because uh, this has mostly been to get my configuration files back in order. Uh, that's what this channel is mostly about. It's going to be mostly coding Go and Linux and learning about cybersecurity. So if you haven't if you haven't checked us out, come on in and and uh, visit the gang. We have people from all over. We have you know uh, PhD grads. We have neurosurgeons. We have you know CEOs. We have all kinds of people from all over the world. And it, they, it's been a fun little group. So come join our group if you haven't already. And uh, I'm gonna call that the end for this video any other questions before i wrap it up i'll be highlighting this video and publishing it tomorrow so can't we write our own canon round here we write our own canon canon as in like what is canon is that what you're talking about like like star wars canon or or are we talking about like potato gun canon what are we talking about here both you can't just say yes. I don't know what you said yes to. I can't hear myself. Oh, <laughs> okay. Mixing matrix and old terminals. Right, right. Yeah, exactly, right? No, that's circa 1981. You can't do that. Um, and, of course, Raritan was giving me crap about, well, what are you going to do? You're going to, like, take pictures of punch cards next? You didn't say those exact words, but that was the insinuation. Uh, mixed matrix and old terminals. Writing our own canon. Yeah, uh-huh, canonical. Yeah, I actually think it's one in zeros. No no judgment there. Uh, I'm the worst. Uh, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what do you got in mind? You know, ion cannon, you know? Anyway, hey guys, it's, it's been a lot. Of team, team, team Matrix and Punch Card tomorrow. You know what? Don't tempt me. Do not tempt me. I'm sure there's some way to code in Punch Card. And you, if you haven't coded in Brain F... The F stands for fuck. Uh, you should look it up. Because <laughs> it's crazy. It's like coding in punch cards. Yeah, punch cards and QR codes in the same year. Who knows not? We might not. What if we made a whole language with just QR codes? And make them like kanji. I mean, it's possible. We could definitely do it. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I'm going to post this tomorrow, so come by and look at it. And if I did anything wrong, leave a comment. Take care. And cut.